Hi everyone, I'm Joe Devereaux and I teach in the Department of English and Writing Studies in the Faculty of Arts and Humanities and I'm also the interim director of the new Creative Arts and Production program which is going to be housed in the Faculties of Arts, Music and uh, Media Studies. Uh, I'm here to talk to you today about collaboration in the Creative Arts. To give you a famous example, I'm sure you all recognize this guy. This is, of course, William Shakespeare, 1564 to 1616, in the well-known Chandos portrait, which is in the National Portrait Gallery in London, England. But who is this guy? This similarly bearded Renaissance man is Richard Burbage, an accomplished actor in Shakespeare's theatre company, the Lord Chamberlain's, and later the King's Men. Burbage was the first actor to perform the title roles of many Shakespearean tragedies, such as Richard III, Hamlet, and King Lear. He continued acting until his death at the age of 52 in 1619. Some people argue that the Chandos portrait of Shakespeare was in fact painted by Burbage. But what about this figure on the right? This is a picture of William Kemp, another actor in Shakespeare's company, who originated many of the comic roles in the plays, such as Dogberry in Much Ado About Nothing, shown here. And one last portrait. Who is the man on this play title page? This is Robert Armin, who was also a playwright himself and who first played many of the wise fools in Shakespeare's later plays after Will Kemp left the company in 1600. Roles like Touchstone in As You Like It, Feste in Twelfth Night, and The Fool in King Lear. Now, why am I talking about these actors? I'm talking about them for the simple reason that we need to remember that Shakespeare's plays were written for the stage rather than for the page. So the actors who first performed the roles had an undeniable shaping influence on those plays. Shakespeare earned money not through sales of his books, but by being a principal shareholder in his theatre company. He wrote his plays for audiences and he needed great actors to bring the characters to life. This is just one way in which Shakespeare's work is the product of creative collaboration. We also need to consider that we would not have 18 of Shakespeare's 36 plays, that's half of them, without the publication of the first folio in 1623, seven years after the playwright's death. The first folio was put together by his colleagues in The King's Men, John Hemmings and Henry Condal. Note that their names are listed on this page from the first folio, along with those of Shakespeare himself, Richard Burbage, Will Kemp, and Robert Armin, among others. The point here is that Shakespeare's plays were not created in a vacuum or solely by him, a lone genius struggling away in a garret, but by the actors and compilers of his scripts and by the centuries of editors, actors, producers, directors, audiences, and readers that followed and that continue to shape the Shakespeare canon. In other words, the creation of what we call metonymically Shakespeare is in fact the work of thousands of people over more than four centuries. When we think of that, we think of how creativity involves collaboration, engagement, interpretation, adaptation, and contribution. It's something that only happens through a community of many people bringing art to life. The Chandos portrait I started with is just the most recognizable face attached to this vast collaborative network of creativity, something that connects us all. Thank you. Thanks.